calm ended, and a great storm rose. The waves splashed higher and higher, lightning flashed, thunder roared. The ship rolled in a wild and tumbling sea. The little mermaid was not afraid of the high winds, but the sailors on the ship were. The ship creaked and groaned. Soon the mast snapped like a stick. The ship turned on her side, and the water rushed in. The little mermaid saw the people on the ship were in great danger. She searched for the young prince and caught sight of him just as the ship broke in two. He was sinking down, down into the deep sea. For a second, the mermaid was delighted. Then she remembered that a human being could not live in the water. Quickly, she swam in and out of the floating boards to where the prince had disappeared. She had to save him. Deep, the mermaid dove into the water. She found the prince and gathered him into her arms. His eyes were closed. He was too tired to swim any more, and would have died if it hadn't been for the little mermaid. Morning came. The storm was over. Color returned to the prince's cheeks, though his eyes stayed shut. The little mermaid kissed the prince and thought to herself how much he looked like the marble statue in her garden. Then the little mermaid saw land. The waves were carrying them to a sandy beach in front of a large church. The mermaid laid the prince on the sand, taking care that he faced the sun so that it could warm him. All at once, the church bells rang. A group of girls ran through the church garden. One of the girls, who had lovely dark hair and eyes as blue as the sky, saw the prince and went to him. As she did, the prince sat up. He smiled at the young girl and held out his hand to her. The prince thought it was she who had saved him. He didn't see the little mermaid. She hid behind some rocks and covered her face with sea foam. Sadly, the little mermaid returned to her father's home. The sisters asked her what she had seen, but she told them nothing. The little mermaid felt too unhappy to speak. Many an evening and many a morning she rose to where she had last seen the prince, but she never saw him, and each time she went home sadder than ever. The little mermaid's one comfort was to sit in her garden and put her arms around the marble statue that looked so much like the prince. At last she could bear it no longer, and told her sisters what had happened. One of her sisters had heard of the prince and knew where he lived. Come, little sister, she said. Then all the sisters linked arms and rose out of the water. The little mermaid saw the prince's palace, which was very splendid and beautiful. Now that she knew where he lived, the little mermaid came often to the surface and sat under the prince's balcony. Nightly she watched him, though he never saw her. More and more the little mermaid grew to love the prince, and more and more she wanted to live in the world of people. Her grandfather tried to explain the difference between human people and mer people. You see, my child, they have legs, but we have fishes' tails. Oh, I would gladly give my fishes' tail and all my years living underwater for just one day on land as a human girl. You must not say such things. We have a much happier life here. I don't care, grandfather. Isn't there anything I can do that will make me a human girl? Only one thing: you must win the love of a human man. He must love you so much that he marries you. Then you too would be human. Ah, but this is foolishness. For what we find pretty down here, a fish's tail, they find ugly on Earth. They think those two clumsy things called legs are beautiful. But I do so want to be a human girl. Be happy with what you have, my dear. Be happy with what you have. That night, the mer people had a party. All the mermaids and mermen danced to the sounds of their own voices. Which are very lovely, and the most beautiful voice of all belonged to the Little Mermaid, though she did not feel like singing. Instead, she left the party and went to visit the wicked old wizard of the sea. I've always been afraid of him, but perhaps he can show me how to become human.